to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. I guess that ignorance is bliss. Take me back to before the new. Rewind, take it out of cue. Innocence can be a young man's game. Signed up for the Hall of Shame. I wish I knew. Hey, yup. Every now and again, something surprises you. It turns out to be the opposite of what you thought it was when you first sort of clapped eyes on it. It changes your perspective and re-educates you. Now, I've always found the concept of a cruiser motorcycle a big turn-off for sort of over-the-top 1970s Americana on two wheels. Now, as a pre-teen kid you know i grew up on a, a diet of japanese motorcycles the british motorcycle industry was pretty much dead by then obviously too young to ride a motorcycle but i remember those conversations that i had with my mates and it was sort of a a game of top trumps when you were talking about motorcycles and you know the big harley davidsons the electric glide bikes like that always came into the conversation because comparatively by those days standards they had the biggest engines that were the biggest bikes that were the heaviest bikes and as wannabe motorcyclists those were the kind of bikes that we aspired to it's not until i got older that i realized you know actually the cruiser style my motorcycle the, the, the archetypal harley davidson it wasn't just the preserve of Harley Davidson's. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, other motorcycle manufacturers made similar bikes. That was the style then. It's just that Harley Davidson continued to make them when everyone else moved on to other things. Because that was their niche in the market, their speciality. And whenever they tried to make something a little bit more conventional by the standards of the day, something to compete with other motorcycle manufacturers, they were always outclassed by the Japanese, even if it was just on price alone. So, in the 1980s, when the Japanese manufacturers thought they would take a slice out of Harley Davidson's pie and started bringing the factory custom, the Cruiser, onto the market, understandably, everyone saw them as Harley copies, which, strictly speaking, isn't fair. Although, even I perhaps didn't realise that back then. I was of the same mindset. It wasn't until the years rolled on that I realised, actually, you know, some British manufacturers and a lot of continental manufacturers made very similar-esque looking bikes back in the day. And those bikes had the day, but then faded away. Big, comfortable Grand Tourers, designed for covering long distances in relative comfort. Now, when Royal Enfield announced the Super Meteor, as I've said in the past, I was very disappointed. I immediately rolled my eyes when I saw the first images. The Super Meteor and its smaller sister, the Meteor, owe their heritage to Royal Enfield bikes of the 1990s. Bullet Durand models that sort of adopted that cruiser style in order for Royal Enfield to start increasing the market. And I know from a lot of the Indian viewers that comment on this channel, you know, these bikes were revered. They're historic motorcycles in the Royal Enfield history. Something that a lot of us Westerners don't understand because, you know, we've not been intertwined with that history. Royal Enfield, for a lot of people, is a relatively new brand to Western roads. Now, I was quietly impressed by the little Meteor 350 as I think my review of the bike reveals, but there's something about the Super Meteor. No disrespect to the manufacturers, the Japanese manufacturers of cruiser style motorcycles, but somehow the Super Meteor rises above the cliche that the cruiser motorcycle for a lot of people has become. I remember a slight attitude adjustment taking place when I first saw it at the NEC in Birmingham last year at the Motorcycle Live Show. What struck me at the time is that it reminded me more of a Motor Guzzi or a BMW than it did a Harley Davidson. 
there was a definite European flavour in its styling. But it wasn't until a couple of months ago that you know its impression on me really set in when Royal Enfield sent me a press bait for a couple of weeks. And I've got to admit, that period of time that I had that bait really messed my head up regarding my attitude towards certain types of motorcycles, especially the cruiser. Well, especially this cruiser. In fact, I'm going to stick my neck out and say it, this is the best motorcycle that Royal Enfield have built to date. I love my classics, the 350 and the faithful old 500. Not so keen on the Continental GT, but I always thought that the Interceptor 650 was the bike to own. In a lot of respects, I still do. It's a light, nimble motorcycle inspired by some of the British classics from the 1960s. Right up my street. But the Super Meteor has the edge. For a start, it's a better specified and a more complete motorcycle than the Interceptor 650, putting aside the old black models which do feature one or two uh, upgrades that the standard model doesn't have. And I'm not talking about things like the Tripper, you know, the bike just feels more complete than a standard Interceptor. It's the attention of detail on this bike that just allows it to rise above the standard Interceptor. It's the fit and the finish that just, I don't know, it exudes a higher quality. And I know from a motorcyclist point of view, these things are not necessarily that important. It does project a feeling of, you know, higher satisfaction when you're looking at the bike and when you're riding it. It looks and feels a higher quality product. I'm not saying that the Interceptor is a poor quality product, far from it, but the Super Meteor is next level. Although it has to be said, that is reflected in the price. And it doesn't stop there. Royal Enfield have sort of built a presence into this motorcycle. And again, it's not about practicality. It's down to emotion, I suppose, is the way this bike makes you feel. I think a lot of motorcyclists will agree that motorcycling is 90% immersion. And that's something that Royal Enfield are incredibly good at tapping into. You sit in the Super Meteor rather than sitting on it. It's a 650 parallel twin, a middleweight bike, probably considered too small by a lot of people. But as a lot of old motorcyclists will tell you, 500 to 700 cc's represents the sweet spot for a multi-purpose motorcycle. I've never actually tried it myself, but anecdotal stories from viewers and other riders tell me that this engine can propel you up to around about an indicated 110, 112 miles an hour, which is more than enough for a cruiser. The air-cold engine is silky smooth and trouble-free exactly what the doctor ordered for touring with respectable service intervals. The Super Meteor feels like an imposing rad. It has that big bike feel about it. Wide, long, stable. And I don't know whether it's down to intentional design or whether it's just a happy coincidence. You can ride all day at 70 miles an hour with very clean, smooth air washing upwards across your chest which completely eliminates early fatigue caused by wind buffeting. The seat is a delight, offering premium comfort over long distances. The only catch for some people might be the foot forward riding position. It's not something I've been involved with before riding, you know, the kind of bikes that I've ridden over the years. And I was very apprehensive of this riding position to start with, but I actually found it to be extremely comfortable. The rear suspension is quite basic, but up to the job, the front suspension is magical. The upside down showers to me seemed like an odd choice to start with, but once you get riding this bike, you find that you really appreciate them. And that's why this bike messed up my head. 
you know, this is the last thing I would ever contemplate buying. It's the, the last bike I'd ever particularly want to ride. Yet those days riding this bike earlier this year, I can't get them out of my head. I've imagined what this bike will be like touring around Scotland or the Lake District or the Yorkshire Dales. I've imagined what it would be like for a John across the continent. And I've come to the realisation that this is the perfect all-rounder with a leaning towards touring. The styling might be an acquired taste, but you soon forget about that when you're riding this bike. And the thing is, Royal Enfield have very cleverly brought out many different colour schemes that I think most people will find something among them that's going to suit them. It's not all bling and tinsel, it's a serious travelling tool that gives you everything that you need and nothing that you don't need. No compromises for the sake of styling like you get on the Bobber or the Speedmaster. This is the kind of bike that Triumph should have made five, six, seven years ago. The Bobber for me has always been a big disappointment to ride, possibly one of the most uncomfortable bikes I've ever owned. And no disrespect to Speedmaster owners, but personally, I've always found it to be an offensive bike to look at. Now, I love the Triumph name and everything that it stands for historically, but these last few months I've been thinking to myself, you know, some of these sort of cruiser-style bikes that they've brought out since the 1990s, I've always felt that they were all a big compromise, and, you know, pursuing this premium motorcycle ethos doesn't really work, not with real motorcyclists. Triumph is only a niche motorcycle manufacturer. I think they turn out around about 100,000 units a year. And I can't help thinking that, you know, when they had a chance to start over sort of, what, six, seven years ago with the new water-cooled twins, if they'd taken a leaf out of Royal Enfield's book, which has so obviously proven to be extremely successful... Triumph's fortunes could have been so, so different from what they are today. I personally think that Royal Enfield has taught the motorcycle industry, the worldwide motorcycle industry, how you should build bikes that appeal to riders. And it's clear that even Royal Enfield are learning day by day how to improve on that ethos. The Super Meteor being the pinnacle of that learning curve at the moment. But if I was to get one, which bike in my garage would have to go? Ride safely, and I'll see you on Friday.